right, everyone, another video. Same structure up there, nothing changed. Ended up pulling off the insulation off of here, which we made out of. I'll just show you what our little design is. It actually worked quite well. Um, that that was the stuff that was wrapped around the flex line up here, um, keeping it all wrapped up. And then this is actually the rock sole. And we used a gorilla spray glue uh, to stick it to just any aluminum foil. And then we took nice large patches of that and uh, it was just laid on here. So it's a good, if you don't want to have to buy a whole 10 or 25 feet of expensive if you're trying to be super budget um yeah there's a creation right there so that's rock saw that's aluminum foil and it's tag it just right there if you've seen my other videos you know why i did that so i ended up pulling off that because we pulled the butterfly out of there to get more free flow through the system but um i didn't put a reverse uh, a damper on in the system at all and then last night our temperature dropped from Oh my gosh, it was like plus seven down to minus 16 uh, real quick. And and all of that cold air came back into the system and it was just pushing against the system. And again, I went through last video, we're not negative pressure, all that stuff, so we're not sucking air into the house. It's just our direction with uh, our uh, exhaust outport, our termination outside for this is just getting pushed with air. From the, from the wind. We've had some pretty good wind the last couple days, 20 to 60 kilometer uh, breezes, and it just pushes the air in, push that cold in here. It was zero degrees right at this point, measuring with my uh, temperature gun. I showed that in the last video, I believe. So now we're running at eight degrees, 14 degrees. This itself is 15. The dead center inside of this fella here, I just taped this back on. I ran it without this on for a little while but it makes a room in here like 13 degrees it makes it really cold um so uh, the center point of the crossing grids inside was three degrees uh where it's, it says outlet um so yeah when this thing is putting out it's dumping cold we all know that now um without the damper on there you need to have a backdraft damper you can't let that cold air come in here because like, to get this thing started again it would not turn on the um, uh, the compressor. It was only running electric on every mode. It didn't care because I knew I wanted heat and it couldn't do it with a heat pump. So I could put it on heat pump, uh, energy saver mode, whatever. Uh, of course, electric, it ran electric. And so it kept defaulting to electric, which is awesome because essentially we have a safety backup of electric heat. Um, that's fantastic, but I wanted my heat pump working. So what I ended up doing is I ended up pulling off all my insulation, got it all off there. This was damp, this was wet. It was dripping, not a lot, but it was dripping. So clearly having full insulation, you, you, you don't want that. You don't can't have it fully insulated all the way to this point. I don't know what the hell is the difference between the fresh air going in, uh, you know, you're pulling air in on this. I guess that's the difference and it's getting heated up right away by the air in the house. Um, and that might be where it is, but on this one, yeah, this is all sealed. We got it sealed here. It's all sealed all the way that way. But at this point, I was assuming because my termination outside also had condensation, even though this is dehumidifying the air. And we're only you know, like, well, actually, we're like 70% humidity uh, on the on the inlet, and then this dehumidifies it. I don't know how much it pulls out. Of course, this doesn't tell us. Uh, how much is humidity is getting exposed out. I'm sure it knows it, but it's not telling us. Um, and at minus 16, I had frosting on my termination outside. So that's, um, you know, of course you're getting condensation, you get moisture inside the pipes. Story, that's all done. Now I had to end up, I ended up using a hairdryer, just a standard, normal hairdryer. Uh, lifted off my pseudo little boxer, blew heat down inside the input. I blew heat into my six inch opening up and you know heated this thing right up really good. This was actually 105 degrees. So I was blowing a lot of heat in here to trigger whatever sensor was inside of this. I, uh, outlet, inlet, I don't know. I have to assume it was on the outlet because this all happened all at once. And the only thing that changed was the temperature dropped. We, it just got too damn cold. 
And of course, this isn't going to operate like an air conditioner. It's not going to operate in the super cold. So that's how I got it restarted. It was a major pain. Uh, if you have a fully sealed system, that totally blows. So, um, you know, if I wasn't cheap and I wanted to blow $300 on a, uh, a ream approved, beautiful plastic sheep thing in my diggy, you can literally undo the three screws on the side, one up on the bottom, one on the top and bottom there. Uh, three on that side and you could just pull away your, your magical uh, $300 plastic mold and um, I get it out of the way. If things should be like 50 bucks. I get it. They got to engineer it, but come on, that's that's a little excessive. Um, and you could just pull it away. You could get access directly to your system and heat it back up, let hot air get in there. I ran this thing nearby as well. It's just an electric element. Kept it three feet away to make sure I had, you know, I'm not going to melt my plastic mold. And it heated this up to 30, 40 degrees, but it wasn't enough to get through the insulation and this piping. So that ran for about two hours. Um, anyway, that's how I got it going and uh, ended up actually cranked it to 150 to call for high demand. And the electric kicked on. It took like another 30 seconds and then the heat pump actually kicked on. So that was pretty exciting because I was like, great, I wrecked my system thinking I cooled it, back pressured it too much because it was getting a lot of A006s. Um, I even, you know, disabled it, went over to my breaker, turned it off to force a reset, let the system chill out while I de-insulated. So it was off for 10 minutes. If that is a, of course our books, our ream books don't tell us. They're very subpar. Um, and I, you know, if you have it off for 10 seconds, 30 seconds, a minute, 10 minutes, five minutes, I don't know, but I had it off for a solid 10 minutes plus and um and then we it started working so bonus on us but um yeah if you're going to be running these in the cold environments i mean a lot of these folks run them down in the states they're pulling in 40 degree air and they're dumping it out into 20 degrees so they want it in their air you know into their house to cool their house off um but uh yeah we don't want <laughs> we can't do that so final thing i did is I connected it back up uh, with the insulation off, all that stuff. So this will get heated a little bit by the room. Yeah, cool my room, heat exchange. But outside of that, what um, what I did is I ended up putting the damper, the butterfly damper that was in the pipe back here. Um, I put it on the outside of where at my termination. I actually cut up the 45 degree slope of my termination because I have 12 foot of deck over top of my um, my termination. And uh, I ended up cutting it so the slope, I, I explained this last video, where I f folded it up and I could put my butterfly right on against the grid, the rodent grid, and uh, screwed it in with the side of the terminators because they got cut. So I could fold those in, taped it, sealed it, and now it is not going to let any air push back in from outside. So we'll see what happens with condensation, all that. I'll keep an eye on it for a couple days. And. Uh, Bonus, there we go. Hope that helps anyone else who may have had any issues in the cold weather. Um, we do not have the same benefits of down south um, just because we have to deal with the cold as well. So, so far it's gonna be an awesome system. I still have a lot of faith in it, but um, yeah, you gotta be careful how you set it up, for sure.